Well, we're doing this comparison film about the Dodge, and I'm sitting in a Dodge uh, because it's something that uh, demonstrates what Salesforce, a dealership, needs to do. You need to know your competitor. Remember this ad? Dodge started the 94 model year by telling us they were changing the rules for full-size pickups. Well, let's look for ourselves. Hi, I'm Loretta Higgins, and welcome to Chevy Truck Track. Hi, I'm Peter Carey, and we're going to see if Dodge has changed the rules. In fact, we're going right to the source, the local Dodge dealership, to see for ourselves. And while we're out there, we'll check out Ford as well. Last fall, we introduced you to the new Dodge Ram. Now, it was the first completely redesigned full-size truck from Dodge in 20 years. At the time, Dodge had about 7% of the full-size market. In rolling out the new truck, Dodge was sending a signal that they were getting serious about the full-size market. And as you know, they claimed to be changing the way people would look at these trucks. Well, they certainly have increased their sales. But those numbers don't tell the whole story. Well, when Dodge brought out this truck, they uh, claimed that they were going to change all the rules. And although they've had a very good year, the truck market, particularly the full-size truck market, has been so strong that they have indeed sold uh, every truck they've produced. But uh, to let everybody know, so have we. Uh, we were uh, certainly a bigger manufacturing of trucks uh, when we started off the 1994 model year. And uh, our sales have increased raw numbers just about what Dodge has uh, increased this year. Uh, the fact of the matter is they had a smaller base to start from. So their percentage increase certainly looks a lot better. The fact of the matter is we have sold every truck we've produced. Uh, we're producing more every year. And our day supply is extremely low. So where we're producing more trucks, uh, we have fewer and fewer in stock. Uh, in fact, our biggest problem is producing enough trucks to satisfy the demand. So that's where we stand this, uh, this year. It really hasn't affected us too much. Uh, as you know, as last year, uh, Dodge only had the regular cab. Chevrolet's always had the extended cab here, which has always been a, a top seller for us. So far in 1994, full-size pickups account for about 56% of all truck sales in the United States. Of that 56%, Chevy and Ford each have about 21%. Dodge is around 8 and GMC truck has the remaining 7%. So far this year, these percentages add up to about 500,000 units for Ford, 470,000 for Chevy, and around 160,000 for Dodge. For Chevy, that's about a 19% increase over last year. And we have the lowest day supply of anyone. So you're selling everything we can build. We were able to produce the number of trucks we needed for the marketplace. I am extremely convinced we'd have been the number one full-size pickup truck. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't just build uh, plants in short order. We had to try to go to alter alternate work arrangements, uh, some overtime, some extra shifts to maximize our production. And we did increase production about 18, 19 percent. So you can see that that was probably a direct correlation to where we went up in sales. Uh, had we had more trucks, we certainly would have sold more trucks. As sales go up, the breakdown of who buys these trucks is expected to remain constant. About 1.2 million, or 72% of the sales, are expected to be for personal use. The commercial market is next, at 260,000 units, or 15%. Finally, large fleets are expected to account for 12% of the market. The thing that's really dynamic and changing is the uh, club cab, super cab, extended cab market. They're all, you know, whatever we want to term the extra space behind the seat. Uh, that's the thing that's dynamic. Uh, we are changing. Uh, we've gone from 42 percent. We're up in the 55 percent range. We anticipate we'll be over 60 percent of our production in extended cabs this year and sales. Uh, our competitors are limited in their production, so their numbers will not grow uh, accordingly. But the only dynamic change this year over last year will be the extended cab market for us because we have changed our facilities to produce more extended cab vehicles. That'll be the biggest change this year. There aren't any all-new full-size pickups being introduced this model year, but all the manufacturers are making some changes. You'll get details in the weeks and months ahead with Prospect, the 95 Comparison Book, Pro Magazine, and upcoming issues of Truck Track. But for right now, let me give you the highlights. 
Chevy CK has several changes this year, starting with her all new interior. Four wheel anti lock brakes are standard on all full size trucks. And the driver side airbag is included on trucks under 8,500 pounds GVWR. Not much is changing with F Series in 1995. You may want to note that the 7.3 liter naturally aspirated diesel is being replaced with a 7.3 liter turbo diesel. Probably the most significant product changes are coming from Toyota and Dodge. Both manufacturers are introducing extended cab models this year. Well, extended cab sales are, uh, seem to be the big boom in uh, full-size pickup trucks right now, just mainly because they provide the additional cargo space, be it uh, boxes or people, that uh, most uh, owners demand nowadays. A pickup truck in the past permitted limited passenger use, and now with the extended cabs, it permits you to take a family or friends if you're going out. And these vehicles are becoming more a principal form of transportation as opposed to a secondary or in some case, maybe a third form of transportation of family. It still hauls, which is what's important for a pickup truck, whether they're trailering a boat or hauling some payload. And it also permits them to take four, five, in some cases, six adults in this vehicle when they travel. So that is taking over for passenger cars that uh, were in the family in the past. The extended cab market has belonged to Chevy and Ford. So Toyota and Dodge have a good reason for going after our business. For the entire industry, regular cabs account for 58% of all full-size pickup sales. Extended cabs are next at 38. Chassis and crew cabs make up the final 4%. It seems like the majority of the ones, the customers that I have talked to, uh, are family oriented, have kids that they need to have the room inside there. They don't want the car, they're looking for the trucks. They're looking for the versatility in the trucks and with the extended cab it gives them the option of, of being a family vehicle. Not like the old days where it used to be just uh, just strictly a, a man's truck or whatever you want to call it, just a one person truck. And it, it offers that versatility now. The uh, full size pickup truck market in the past has been uh, predominantly male oriented. Uh, both in person purchase uh, decision making and uh, for principal driver. Uh, that is changing. It's changing uh, slowly, but it's changing more rapidly with us and the other competitors because of our quick move to extended cab. The extended cab opens up that market for the female buyer who has a tendency to consider things like taking kids around to uh, the school or going to the store to go grocery shopping and wanting to put the groceries inside the vehicle. So we right now have more female purchase decision makers on a Chevrolet product than any of our competitors. Probably the most important feature that I have ever shown is when a gentleman tells me that he has a family and obviously he's married and he says to me, you know, what am I going to do with the car seat? The point that I like to bring out is that the car seats have to be in the front seat. They can't be back in, in, the, in the shotgun seats. We put the car seat up in front and I like to hop behind there and say, now if, if this happened to be your wife, you know, and I'm six foot tall, look how much room I've got back here. She's not going to be cramped plus you have room for another child if you have one. Dodge has a focused marketing strategy for their Ram Club Cab pickups in 1995. Allocation is going to be tightly restricted until December. One factor determining how many club cabs a Dodge dealer gets is the number of Chevy CK extended cabs sold in the market. For example, extended cabs accounted for 53% of the sales across the Southwest in 93. So that area is expected to get a high percentage of the Ram Club cabs this year. Dodge projects their sales mix to be 75% of the 1500 series and 25% for the 2500 and 3500 pickups. Our advantage in terms of availability will be extended cab models this year. We will probably be in the range of 2 to 1 to Ford and uh, probably more like 4 to 1, maybe 5 to 1 to Dodge depending upon what they're able to produce. So our sales force will have a much better opportunity to supply the demand for this growing market this year than uh, ever in the past. So that'll be our uh, great strength. Again, though, I caution you that it's important to know some of the uh, differences between the vehicles so that you can talk to the quality and uh, advantages we have over competitors because it, uh, the market's getting closer and closer in terms of product. When Dodge introduced the new Ram, they put a lot of emphasis on it being the biggest of the full-size pickups. Well, from what we've seen, Dodge is expected to continue this marketing strategy with what it calls the Ram Club Cab. But as we saw in the first comparison with Chevy, numbers alone don't tell the whole story. Remember Dodge's claim to have the roomiest cab on the market? 
Well, as we saw in our comparison, the only real disparity in numbers came in hip room. And that was because Dodge measured from under one armrest to the other. Chevy prefers to measure usable space. You'll probably hear roominess claims again this year with the Ram Club Cab. And Dodge can make this claim in some areas. The Club Cab's rear seat has about two more inches of headroom than Chevy. And they have just over two inches more hip room. Now, shoulder room is about dead even. And finally, Chevy has about an inch and a half advantage in leg room. Add up all the numbers, and Dodge has maybe around two more inches of overall space. Now, when you want to maximize this space, the Dodge rear seat only folds up. Let's take a look at the Chevy. First, you'll notice that the rear seat has standard head restraints. Plus, Chevy gives you more versatility with a seat that folds up and down. Depending on your cargo needs, that can be a real benefit. Legroom is our key advantage in the back. Uh, there's some width dimensions where we might fall a little bit on the shy side of uh, Dodge, but you're going to find that width is generally not the big consideration in an extended cab. It seems to be the hip to knee space that is the most important, or leg room. And leg room is where we have a, a two-inch advantage. Uh, and I'm not even taking Ford to consideration in this regard because they have a very poor space in the rear of their vehicle. The Dodge is our closest competitor, so you need to understand those dimensions. But in terms of uh, leg room, we are the uh, superior vehicle. Dodge also likes to brag about being the largest full-size truck. For example, whether it's four-wheel or two-wheel drive, the Dodge is about one inch larger in overall height. So what does that mean to your customers? Well, let's start with a lower step-up height, which can make it easier to get in and out of the Chevy. Now, this height can vary depending on suspensions, payload, tires, and other factors. But let's look at these two trucks just to get some idea of what I mean. The step-up height on this Ram is about 21 inches. Let's look at the CK now. Getting into the Chevy requires stepping up only about 18 and a half inches. To someone climbing in and out of this cab every day, that can be a big difference, especially with an extended cab. A lower step up can make access to the back seat that much easier. One of the items we found on the Dodge that was commonly mentioned is their cup holder. Uh, it's way up on top of the uh, dash, and every owner we've talked to has said they really would like that to be lower. It can spill on the radio components. Whatever they're drinking is up there visible to the world and could obstruct their visions, and they really have preferred our cup holders. Now, that's a minor thing, but it's simple things like that that might differentiate between our product and their product. It's certainly something you could talk to about our product or point out to a prospective customer who's considering the Dodge. I've done two things as far as this truck's concerned in my business. I've shut the engine off, and I've also lost my phone. Uh, get the phone back on, I'd have to either turn the ignition back on or go into auxiliary and power up on the phone. It going out, for me, I don't like it. So, bad business. This is the Chevrolet front suspension on a four-wheel drive truck. It's an independent front suspension, which gives us a ground clearance advantage over the Dodge. That's because the front differential is tucked up inside the frame. The Dodge uses a solid front axle, which means that the differential is going to hang down lower than on the independent front suspension Chevrolet. Just as there's a difference in the overall height of two-wheel drive models, there's a similar distinction between 4x4s. Some people might think this would give Dodge a ground clearance advantage, but Chevy actually holds the edge. It's nearly one and a half inches more clearance in the front and almost two at the rear. So even though Dodge sits higher, Chevy delivers better ground clearance. The Dodge may look like it has a lot of ground clearance, but ground clearance is more than just something cosmetic that you see from outside the vehicle. You need to crawl underneath the truck and see what objects are hanging, hanging below the truck. And in Dodge's case, the differential being on a solid front axle hangs lower than on the Chevrolet, 
I, I let them drive it and, and the pickup does the rest. I mean, I just keep my mouth shut and let the truck do the talking while they're driving. When I actually get them behind the wheel and we take it out and we go for a drive, nine times out of ten they'll come back and be absolutely amazed that it rides like a car. That's, that's one of the key features is to get them behind the wheel, let them drive it, and when you bring it back on a lot, you know, don't pull it back into the inventory, pull it back up in the front into the sold part because they're going to take it home with them. The Chevrolet four-wheel drive front suspension is a fully independent front suspension. Since the independent front suspension has no solid axle connecting the two sides, an impact on one side will not be felt on the other. Whereas on the Dodge with a solid front axle, an impact on one side will be transmitted to the other side of the vehicle. One final claim made by Dodge is that they offer the most powerful engines in the market. But they don't tell you the offer is very limited. Take this Ram 1500. Approximately 75% of the club cabs built are going to be this model. It comes standard with a 5.2 liter V8 or an optional 5.9 liter V8. That's it. No V6 and no diesel engines. The Chevy CK1500 extended cab comes standard with the Vortec V6. It can also be ordered with the 5 liter V8, the 5.7 liter V8, the 6.5 liter V8 diesel, and the 6.5 liter V8 turbo diesel. So while Dodge may offer a few more horsepower, Chevy offers a real choice. I think what we have in 1995 is actually uh, still a large advantage with our truck. We, uh, first of all, we're going to have more of those produced for our sales force to sell, particularly in the extended cab models. Uh, it's still going to be important to have some uh, little bullets in the back pocket about our advantages over the Dodge. I uh, talk about the fact that we still have a very roomy uh, uh, second seat in the extended cab models. Uh, we have some better uh, cup holder locations. We have backlit knobs. These things are important. And the engine selection, of course, is a big one to talk about. But the fact of the matter is, I think it's still Dodge shooting at us, particularly in the extended cab market. They have the bigger challenge to try to sell into our market than we do to sell into theirs. We have a proven product. We have a lot of loyalty. We will have a lot of customers coming in to look to replace their previous Chevrolets. And certainly we have our dependability story that we've been telling for the last few years. So uh, their biggest challenge is to sell through our product, not vice versa. But again, it's still important to know our product so that you can uh, confront those questions you may have for a Dodge shopper. You, you can't look at one year or you can't look at one trend. You have to look at something over the length of time. And Chevy has been out there. Look at the amount of trucks on the market today. Look at the trucks and how long they last. You know, Chevy lasts. All this competition is making it more important to bring new products to market faster and more efficiently. Chevy is certainly doing its best to give you that competitive edge. In order to come up with a new vehicle, there are several stages which have to be done. You have to develop a design, you have to create a prototype, you have to test that prototype, and then you can bring it to market. Uh, what this particular process that we're doing here allows us to do is to compress that prototype cycle to its very minimum. And by doing that, what you're able to do is go through more cycles of prototype. If I'm able to go through five or six cycles of prototype as opposed to one, I'm going to have a much more optimized design. I'm going to have a much more high quality part and in the end, I'm going to have a better fit and finish, better function, uh, better quality to the customer. And that's really what it's all about. The part we have here, this is a crankshaft that we developed in our system. Uh, what we did is we took the design, we produced this using the stereolithography process. Uh, that involved using a set of laser controls, which defined how the actual geometries were created. Uh, this particular part was built in a period of time about 48 hours in length. Uh, this was then used in the development process to evaluate the design and the design intent. The design group was then able to go back, come up with a new iteration of this design, and continue on and produce another part. This technology uses ultraviolet energy, and it uses that energy to convert a liquid polymer into this solid plastic-like part. Uh, the way the process works is by using computer controls which control where that energy gets excited or where that energy gets applied and how that actually solidifies that part into a solid piece. Since we've been making prototypes in this area, we've been able to do parts that were interior trim components, uh, powertrain components, uh, exterior body components. We've done a lot of different vehicle components 
and we found a very consistent story. We found that typically we're able to save uh, anywhere between 60 to 80 percent, both in cost and time, by using this process. Even though Dodge is making a push in the extended cab market, Ford remains our primary competitor. Let's take a quick look at a few important Chevy advantages. Ford Super Cab does have about two more inches of rear headroom. But starting from a slight shoulder room advantage, Chevy offers a noticeable difference with three more inches of hip room and almost five more inches of leg room. Of course, roominess is just part of a comfortable ride. The suspension is also a major contributor. Chevy uses upper and lower control arms with coil springs to deliver a smooth ride. F-Series still uses Ford's twin traction beam and twin I-beam suspensions, at least for this model year. Ford uses twin traction beam front suspension, which essentially is a very long control arm coming from opposite sides of the vehicle going to the, to the wheels. That design forces the engine rather high in the engine compartment and raises the CG of the vehicle. It does not allow for as precise wheel control as the independent front suspension allows. The Ford has very severe camber change throughout the wheel travel, whereas the Chevrolet truck has very good camber control throughout the wheel travel. You may remember, in an earlier edition of Truck Track, we told you Ford announced plans to update its suspensions. The new design will be a short, long-arm suspension similar to Chevy's. They've started this year with Explorer. F-Series is next. So it seems Ford thinks Chevy has a better idea. But for now, Ford full-size pickups still use twin I-beam and twin traction beam suspensions. The twin traction beam used on four-wheel drive models hangs down like the Dodge suspension. The result is that Chevy's design provides two more inches of ground clearance. They'll be abandoning the twin traction beam front suspension because of the favorable characteristics that Chevrolet enjoys today in its independent front suspension. It's lighter, it's more nimble off-roading, and it provides better ground clearance than uh, twin traction beam suspension will provide. We've already told you about some of the product highlights for 95. Now let's take a look at what else you can expect from the competition. As we told you, Ford is putting a new suspension in the Explorer. They are also adding dual airbags and freshening the interior. And even though Ford is continuing production of the Aerostar, they are dropping two trim levels. The Aerostar is now available only in the XLT model. Over at Chrysler, most of the plans are for down the road away. Completely new minivans are expected to roll out late in the model year, but will probably be classified as 96 models. Chrysler is also reported to be considering a Dodge Ram 4500. It would be targeted to compete with the Chevrolet 3500 HD. Finally, the Geo Tracker is getting more competition this year. Kia is introducing the Sportage. And Toyota recently unveiled the RAV4 in Tokyo. It's expected to arrive here later in the year. Now, not all of Chevy's challenges are coming from the competition. In the years to come, customer satisfaction is going to be just as important as product. Let's look at what we're doing to help you satisfy customers. We have clearly found through recent research and for the last few years that the customer's expectations uh, of their transportation experience or their, their vehicle is not just the product. And quite frankly, uh, product quality is just about at parity. In many cases, our product quality is good or better than anything in the market today. So the product is not going to be the deciding factor for customers today. Today, we're finding very clearly that what is becoming paramount in the decision process of that customer is that entire ownership experience, the transportation experience, if you will. And that's where the dealers have a major impact. So our dealers have been working with us over the course of the last two years, and it has been a dealer group working with wholesale. And we have actually looked at first who our customer is, defined our ultimate customer and the dealer our customer and our employees as a customer. And then we focused on the ultimate customer to see exactly what their expectations and requirements are in their entire life cycle, in their purchasing, in their first, obviously, their shopping experience, and then the purchase experience, then the service experience, the entire 
experience with their automobile. We have defined those customers' expectations, and then from those expectations, we've developed standards. And those standards now are going to be a mirror that we're going to hold up in front of our face, both wholesale and retail. And we're going to say, this is what our customer expects us to perform to. This is the level of performance they expect. These are the things we need to do to exceed their expectations. And when you exceed your customer's expectations, it just means more potential for additional customers coming in because they've enjoyed the experience. It's been a wow rather than that that experience that they were fearing, they didn't want to be involved in. Instead, it was a comfortable, relaxed uh, experience. They were given good information, and they felt good about their purchase. Then that just naturally generates more money and more profits for the dealership and for the salesperson. So uh, my feeling is that standards will be an excellent tool and will be embraced by our dealers in terms of here's a real way that we can focus better on our customers' expectations and exceed them. Establishing standards is just one of the news stories of interest to Chevrolet truck salespeople. GM is also making leading-edge news in safety. Starting with 1995, approximately 600,000 GM vehicles will be equipped with standard daytime running lights. These include Geo Metro, Beretta, Corsica, and S-Series trucks. All GM passenger vehicles will have the lights by 1997. The lights aren't required by law. GM simply believes it's a good, cost-effective way to help people avoid crashes and save lives. Insurance studies prove the lights are effective. Since being mandated in Scandinavia, multi-vehicle crashes are down 23% in Sweden, 40% in Norway, and 37% in Finland. There's also good news regarding Chevy van conversions. Record sales have put Chevy van chassis inventories at an all-time low. Even Astro conversions are up 30%. Usually, conversion companies run incentives this time of year, and they sell previous model year chassis well into October. But because of these record sales, incentives have been scaled back, and they're already selling 95s. On a final note, you may have heard that Honda is entering the minivan competition. The Odyssey is due to hit our shores in January. We don't have all the information yet, but we do know Honda is only offering a four-cylinder engine, and they're targeting the high end of the market. We'll have more information on the Odyssey and upcoming issues of Truck Track, plus a lot more. We're going to take a look at all of Chevy Truck's competition, and we hope to give you some additional information that will help your sales in 95. So that's the story on Chevy Trucks until the next edition of Truck Track. Thank you.